So, one of the videos I posted uh, a while ago at this point, before I went to New York in the beginning of April, that caused quite the conundrum. It was quite a bit more controversial than my usual video. I uh, usually don't get any pushback at all, and this got, you know, some. Deconverter Man had exploded for three straight days, and got even, even got a little pushback from JB. Was the belief is not a choice. Uh, you want to make it, atheist head explode... There's a couple of key ways to do it that I pointed out. You say, you were never a real Christian. Ah, what do you mean? Ah, their head explodes. You say, you really do believe in God. You really do believe in God. Ah, head explodes. And also apparently tell them that belief is a choice. Ah, head explodes. Now, here's the problem with the belief is not a choice routine. And this, isn't, this is not to stir up the controversy again. It's just to point out the obvious that you guys might not have seen. And by the way, JB, Bigfoot, 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 Bigfoot. <laughs> you can't stop the Sasquatch, JB. Don't even try. I don't care if you ever become a Christian, but so help me God, you are going to believe in Bigfoot by the end of the next two years if it kills me. If I have to walk on cut glass, I'm going to make you believe in Bigfoot. Hallelujah. You're going to be preaching Bigfoot by Twitter, on YouTube. You're going to be preaching Bigfoot, Bigfoot, Bigfoot. You cannot stop the Sasquatch, Sasquatch JB. Just give up, because I ain't going to rest until you believe as I believe Bigfoot is real. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, I don't bring up Bigfoot all the time. I bring up every once in a while, because it's a really good analogy. But anyways, I brought it up in the Belief is Not a Choice video. It wound up being controversial, too. Okay, if you are one of these atheists who has said publicly on Twitter or on one of your streams that belief is not a choice... I know you don't know this, and I know you didn't recognize this, but understand something. That is a scam. Hello? If you have publicly offered up the idea that belief is not a choice, okay, another way of saying that is I can't be wrong. <laughs> oh, you didn't notice that, did you? <laughs> I can't be wrong. Think about if a flat earther tried to run that scam on you. So, see, if you are an atheist and I'm a Christian, we are entering into this into this debate into over contested ground. I believe God exists. You believe God does not exist. If you try to preempt the conversation by saying, I don't have a choice, you're basically trying to say, I can't be wrong. Gee, how convenient for you. You have no choice. So you must be right then. <laughs> Why would you be doing that? Got to ask yourself a question. I promise you it's a scam. Think of it if you were debating a flat earther and you heard them say, you know, I, I, I don't have a choice. If the earth were round, I'd believe it were round. I have no choice in the matter. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to preempt a debate, shut it down before it begins by basically de facto declaring that you can't be wrong about the, the, the subject. Why? Because you have no choice. God existed, I believe in him. There you go. Case closed, Greg. <laughs> God existed, I believe in him. It's a scam. And you should ask yourself, if you are trying to avoid argumentation by running scams, even if you didn't notice it was a scam until I just pointed it out, that should tell you something about just how fervently you actually, how strong your position actually is internally. People who have strong internal consistency in the things they believe, whether they be right or wrong, don't tend to run scams why they don't have to. They don't throw things out there to try and, you know... To say you have no choice in the matter is basically a way of shutting down a d debate preemptively. You are entering into a discussion with someone who doesn't agree with you by basically saying you can't be wrong. I know you didn't think of it that way, but that's really the truth. Think of if a flat, flat earther pulled that on you. I have no choice, dude. If, if the earth were round, I'd believe it were round. <laughs> See, and the other thing. Now, what the other thing to notice, okay, it's forever conflating ontology with belief. Atheists do this routinely. What you actually believe is of no consequence whatsoever. The only reason we should care about what you believe or what I believe or what anybody believes is if it corresponds to reality. What we are ultimately discussing here is not beliefs. It is ontology, which leads us directly to the lack theist. Lack theist, as it is being commonly used... So I hope that, that, you, that settles out with the... 
Belief is not a choice routine. It's a scam, guys. I understand that there are, there are aspects of Christianity. I can't believe Jesus walked on water. I have no choice. I understand that you might find that certain particular aspects of Christianity hard to believe in. That doesn't mean that overall, you know, you have no choice. You're an atheist because you're just forced by the matter. That's a way of saying I can't be wrong. It really is. And if you're trying to preempt a conversation by saying you can't be wrong before the conversation begins, you take a good solid look at that. Why? It means you're not as confident in your position as you think you are. People who are truly, deeply confident in their positions don't try to run off at the mouth to disguise the fact that they aren't. They don't run scams why they don't have to. Period. If you are offering up publicly, you know, the proposition, I have no choice in the things I believe, you might as well be saying, I can't be wrong. Because it's the same thing. And if a flat earther were saying it, you'd immediately recognize how disingenuous it actually was. They were trying to run a scam on you. They don't want to enter into debate. I can't earth around, I believe it. I have no choice. Now, I understand there are certain key things about Christianity that you might find more implausible than other things. But generally speaking, people have used it as a way to preemptively shut down a discussion altogether. That's how it's being used, which brings us to lack theism, which is also being used to run scams. Now, I, if you're one of these, there's another way to get everybody to, I'm going to get everybody to this head to explode. Uh, you were never a real Christian, none of you were ever real Christians, and you just want to sin. That's the other, you just want, you guys just want to sin. Stop sinning all the time and then you'll find, all right. Um, no, these two ones are actually, are actually for real, legit. I, I'm not just saying this to try to jokingly make your head explode. I didn't watch, Deacon Vernon, I didn't watch your video on the subject, why it's two hours long, I don't have two hours to watch a response, sorry. If you cut it down to 15 minutes, I'll give you 15 minutes of my undivided attention, but I don't have two hours to watch you rant and rave about how wrong I am. I understand that you nailed me and I'm probably wrong, but if you went to, there are certain things about Christianity that I really truly don't believe, I accept that. That's not really what I was talking about. So if that clarifies it, I don't know. If not moving right along, the same way I made, the reason I made the video is to, is to talk about the more important and more, more, it's not being run as a scam. And if you're one of the atheists who calls himself a lack of belief atheist, and like, I can define atheism however I want. <laughs> you can't tell me how to define atheist. Fine. You can label your position however you want. I agree with that. I accept that. But your labeling of that position should correspond to what you actually believe or it's disingenuous. So run the test on yourself. There is such a thing as a lack theist I understand also that it's a colloquial definition in common usage. All atheism means a lack of belief in God. I'm not arguing that you can't use it, nor am I pointing out that you shouldn't use it. What you shouldn't use it is improperly. First of all, ask yourself a key question. Does it correspond to your actual position? If it doesn't, stop using it. Most of the people who are steadfastly insist on adopting the lack theist, atheist, Lack theist definition. Keep in mind, lack, the, lack theism, you all recognize, implies a very, very non-committal, very soft, eh, I'm just not really sure. It's closer in spirit to agnosticism than actual God does not exist. Everybody understands that and notices that. It implies a very soft, non-committed position. You know, I, do you believe in God? I just lack a belief in God. If you show me some evidence, you know, maybe I could be convinced. I'm just not convinced. By your argument. Show me a good argument. Okay, that implies a very soft, not really all that convinced. Whereas some of the, most of the people who define themselves as lack theists, paradoxically and ironically, one or two tweets later will compare God belief to belief in Santa Claus. Okay, there's no such thing as lack theists, lack of belief in Santa Claus. If I say to you, do you believe in Santa Claus? Not a single solitary person listening to you is going to go, I just lack a belief in Santa Claus. Why? Because it would be ludicrous. No, you steadfastly and adamantly believe Santa Claus does not exist. If that is your actual position about God, that you actually believe God does not exist, then you owe us some sort of explanation why. Why are you so convinced of that? If you aren't so convinced of that, you know, then don't, if you aren't so convinced of that, don't compare it to Santa Claus. Because most of the lack theists aren't actually lack theists.
They actually steadfastly believe that God does not exist. They, will, they give that away two tweets later when they compare God belief to Santa Claus. So a single solitary person on this earth who actually believes in Santa Claus outside of a mental hospital, and even a mental hospital, I don't think it's all that common of a delusion, I really don't. <laughs> outside of a four-year-old, four there is nobody who believes in Santa Claus at all. So, Santa Claus, every single solitary personally, person listen to me, seems to know for a fact that Santa Claus does not exist. Nor would you hesitate for one second. If I said, you got, do you, do you want to try and prove that Santa Claus does not exist? You wouldn't hesitate for one second. So, sure. And you think of justifications on the spot. Why? Because you're positive Santa Claus does not exist. Don't pretend to be positive that God does not exist unless you're willing to tell us why. And when I survey the landscape, there are very, very, very scant few arguments out there, positive cases for atheism. I can count them on my hand. There are almost none. The one or two I can think of off the top of my head, Paul Draper's case for naturalism is probabilistic. But what we are ultimately talking about, Christian atheist, and every honest person listening to me, that includes the atheist. The honest atheist. We are ultimately talking about the only thing we care about, the only thing being discussed and trying to decide is, is proposition. God either exists or God does not exist. What you personally believe is of no consequence to anybody whatsoever, except and unless you have a good reason. Your belief corresponds to reality. The only way we can decide if your belief cores to, corresponds to reality do you understand what I just said? I'll say it again, because it's worth hearing again. Every, almost every atheist, except for the philosophical atheist, conflates ontology with belief. Ontology is what we're ultimately talking about, and that's really important. Belief is irrelevant. Ontology, propositions, God either exists or God does not exist. The opposite of God exists is God does not exist. That's what we're ultimately discussing, the ontology. What you personally believe or do not believe is of almost no consequence whatsoever unless or until you provide some good explanations for it. Period. So belief is irrelevant. I'm just not convinced that God exists. Okay, that's irrelevant. Unless you tell me really good reasons why you should move your position Internally and consistent. You can call yourself a lack of belief atheist if you want to. But then you've got to stop saying things like, you know, it's just like belief in Santa Claus. Because there's no such thing as someone who's not quite committed to the idea. You know, I'm not really committed to the idea that Santa Claus does not exist. <laughs> I'm not I'm really sure. There's no such thing as somebody who would avoid just trying to defend that publicly. Why? Because it's really obviously true. And the fact that it's really hard to, to defend the proposition God does not exist publicly. Very rarely do people even try. There's thousands of arguments for God. Yeah, they're all terrible. They might all not get you over the finish line. But there are standalone pieces of truth within each and almost every one of them. Except maybe the Kalam. <laughs> now the Christian said it's one. Kalam! Ah! Kalam! No, Kalam's great. I don't know. Don't get me started on the Kalam. There are standalone pieces of truth within almost every single solitary argument for God. And I'll be going over the arguments for God in videos to come. There are single aspects of almost every argument that can stand on their own. Thus, they can all be reconfigured to get us over the finish line. When they get us over the finish line, game is over. Game is over. There are almost only like four arguments for God does not exist. Only four. Almost everything that is going on and being debated in this space, with, with rare exceptions, are counter-apologetics. They are not arguments for the ontology. They are not arguments for the proposition God does not exist. Now you're going to say, you can't prove, it, prove them negative. Yes, you can. You can't falsify God. God models are falsifiable, as I've explained. Yes, you can. That is the whole predicate of the logical problem of evil. It is attempting to falsify a God model. Now, I spent some time trying to explain this to somebody on Twitter and almost went insane in the process. God model is not a way of me trying to sound really scientific. What do you mean God model? I've never heard the term before. Okay, go look it up. Common term philosophy. All it means, and it doesn't really matter if it sounds smart or not, that's not the point. 
All it means is a theological construct of what somebody actually believes God is. So if you say to me, Craig, do you believe in God? And I go, yes. Well, what is your God like? I start ascribing attributes. My God is omnipotent. He's omnibenevolent. He's all good. He loves you. He's all good. He's all loving. He's kind and warm and merciful. <laughs> Great and mercy, patient, kind, and long-suffering. Just don't touch your wiener. If you touch your wiener, you, he will send you to hell forever. Ah! <laughs> You're going so well, Craig. <laughs> yeah, he's got a dark side. You touch your wiener and cross him and find out about his dark side. But other than that, he's all loving, all kind, all good. He's omnibenevolent, omniscient, omnipotent. The logical problem of evil goes, aha! Gotcha, Craig. Well, he can't be all good. Why not? Because look at that poor little child there with the cancer. Oh, poor little kid. If your God was all good, he'd care like I do. Even though I don't. <laughs> he'd care like I do, even though I don't. Hmm, thus he can't be all good. You see what, I'm not saying that these arguments work, but the fact that these arguments exist at all shows you that God models are falsifiable. God can be falsified. The famous, you know, Whoever, I think it was Bertrand Russell, you know, there's a visible pink unicorn on Alpha Centauri, and I can't prove that it isn't there. This is utterly fallacious. Yes, you can't prove a pure figment of the imagination isn't there, but as soon as you start ascribing locality and attributes to your invisible pink unicorn, locality and attributes, then you can most assuredly prove that it isn't there. Why? Same way you're proving the logical problem of evil. You are saying omnibenevolence can't exist. Why? Because it logically contradicts the world as it presently occurs. There is evil out there in the world, and the all-good God would do something about it. That's the argument. I'm not saying there aren't counter-arguments. I'm just showing you that theoretically a God model is falsifiable. You can logically prove that certain attributes don't exist, why, compared to the world as it actually occurs, and say, does this correspond to reality? No. Thus it logically can't, thus it cannot be. So it is falsifiable. Ditto for your invisible pink unicorn. Whenever somebody starts saying the spaghetti monster routine, when they're in actual debates, they start ascribing attributes to the spaghetti monster, okay? You're starting to make it falsifiable. As soon as you ascribe locality and attributes to your invisible, to your pink unicorn, there is a pink unicorn in the kitchen. And its properties are X, its properties are Z, and its properties are Y. Then you can falsify it. Why? Because you will be able to prove certain attributes combined with locality are logically not possible. This is the very essence of theoretical physics, guys. This is the very essence of theoretical physics. Proving things out, realm, ruling things out of the realm of possibility just by sheer abstraction and sheer inference. Happens every single solitary day in physics. There's a reason why they build a Hades Collider, whatever it's called, to, to explore these, these set of experiments. Why? Because they are theoretically possible. They spend some time in the background before doing that, ruling things out of the realm of possibility. Hence, once locality and attributes are ascribed, you can falsify an, invis uh, an invisible unicorn or a unicorn. As soon as you start ascribing attributes and locality, then you can, you can see does this correspond to the world as it actually occurs, and you can rule it out of the realm of possibility if it doesn't. Hence, it is also falsifiable. Whoever started running that scam, I believe it was Bertrand Russell, should have known better because it's obviously a scam. If you think it through, it's a scam. No, you can't falsify a figment of your imagination. But we are trying to postulate a God that actually exists, not a figment of the imagination. And we are trying to postulate attributes that actually occur in the real world. So you can falsify. You can look at the world that actually occurs and goes, this can't be because, because of argument, this argument. Just the fact that it hasn't been done could mean that God actually exists. It is theoretically possible to falsify almost every God model under the sun. There's a reason why some God models are harder to shake off than others. Why? Because some are eminently more plausible. Which brings us to the point of lack... I think I might be running out of time. Let me see. Which brings us to the point of lack theism to begin with. Why adopt the lack theist definition? Now, there are lack theists out there who adopt it in good faith to a certain degree. Swear to God. They do. And I get, uh, I've, 
I once watched Prophet of Zod explaining it clearly and articulating it well, and I finally get why this makes sense to people. The problem is, the argument for Lactheism is unassailable, and I don't mean that as a compliment. It is unassailable. It is a looped tautology unto itself. It cannot be argued against or defeated. That's why it's so popular, and that's why people fight Steve tooth and nail to not take away their toy. Why? Because it is unassailable argument. Again, I do not mean that as a compliment. The wall is painted white. The white wall painted white is white. Unassailable in that way. <laughs> it's just, it's how it works is this. And I, and I get why a lot of atheists are adopting in good faith. But really examine what it is positing, and, it, and, it, and you'll see how it falls apart. So the guy calls up, he was, I think it was Shannon and Prophet of Zod, one of the only times Shannon, I think I've ever seen her get mad. I think she might have hung up on the guy, I don't remember. But he was putting down uh, some sort of weak contingency argument, and he starts trying to turn around on Shannon, you can't prove that God does not exist. Uh, Prophet of Zod steps in and white knights her. Um, yeah, it's successfully. And he starts going, he starts laying down basically the, the lactiest position in the most clearly articulated way I've ever heard. God, you can't prove God, God does not exist. He's like, God is akin to vampires. You, you can tell me that you believe in vampires, but you've got to give me some good reason for me to, be, to believe in vampires or I won't believe you. That's the essence of the lactiest argument. It's an unassailable argument. And again, I do not mean that as a compliment. It is an argument that cannot be argued against. What are you doing? You are taking something eminently plausible. Here's another way I'm going to make every atheist head explode. You are taking something eminently plausible. And reality check, Mr. Atheist, Mrs. Atheist. God, God-like beings, God entities, supernatural entities are by definition, if you count all of theism, a hundred times more plausible than atheism. Ah! Ron, you've gone too far, Greg. You've gone too far this time. Bigfoot, Bigfoot, you've gone too far. <laughs> I swear to God, that's true. Let me say it again, just so you can all, all revel in the deliciousness of it all. Yes, theism in general is a hundred times more plausible than atheism. I promise that's true. How can you say that? It's so irrational. Plaus entailed in the definition of plausibility. Sorry, gotcha, got all of you. Entailed in the definition of plausibility is how easy it is for somebody to believe. If you take just present day where we are today in the world, yeah, there are some atheists, but even present day with all of our scientific understanding and know-how and how we've so thoroughly debunked creation, young earth creations and all this stuff, even today, if you just take Christianity, it's, there are north of a billion Christians. And Christianity is the, one of the least plausible of the world religions. In, in order to be a Christian, you kind of have to believe in the miraculous by default. I mean, sort of. You can, I guess, be a, a, a watered-down Christian to the point where you don't even believe in the resurrection. But you usually have to believe in at least two miracles. Immaculate conception and a resurrection. Those are miracles. So I accept that right from the start. That's by definition slightly implausible. But... Even with those two leap of faith required, Christianity is by definition, yeah, let me make your head explode, a hundred times more plausible than atheism. How do you know that? How can you even say that, Craig? Because plausibility entailed in the definition of plausible is how easy it is for something to be believed. And there are north of a billion Christians, and as of right now, I don't know how many atheists there are worldwide, but not that many. And you can't include the nons. If you want to include the nons, you can't. Why? Because they believe in God. Trust me. When I went back to New York, I talked to a lot of nons. You have basically two camps. The theists who are committed and go to church and are religious. And then you have the atheists who are committed, even though they won't, they won't justify the position to God does not exist, even though they won't defend the position, but they're really committed to the idea that God does not exist. Most of the, a whole bunch of the people in between are called nons. Nons, if you go talk to them, easily and readily believe in God. As far as they're concerned, God is omnipresent. They don't go to church. And if you ask them, do you believe in God, they'll probably say no. But if you start talking to them about God, it's really easy for them to talk as if God is an omnipresent entity in their life. Oh, it just wasn't God's time for that person. You know, oh, God had other plans for them. God would get really mad at me if I touched my wiener. 
God will get really mad at me if I keep touching my wiener. I better stop. <laughs> I got a better idea. Just become an atheist. Then you can touch your wiener to your heart's content. Hmm. Maybe I will. I swear to God, go out there. If you don't believe me, atheist, go canvas yourself. Don't go to a church. Don't go to atheist hangout. Just go to any old bar, anywhere in the country, any restaurant. Ask somebody, are you a religious person? If they say yes, don't bother talking to them. Ask them if they're an atheist. If they say yes, don't bother talking to them. Why? Those are two committed polar opposites. I'd say, no, not really. Then ask them. You'll see. They say they don't believe in God. They say they're agnostic. They believe in God a hundred. It's really easy for them to believe in God. It's really, 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 really easy to believe in God. And I can water down almost any God model so that it's eminently plausible. Eminently plausible. You could believe in a Schopenhauer version of God, which is like basically the sum total of all natural laws and all the laws of physics, which we both know exist. And that's God. And then you'll have Matt Dillon to go, oh, wait, 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 wait. That's not, that's the thing that you're saying is God doesn't have any baggage associated with it. Okay, most of the baggage is coming from you, the atheist community. I understand that it started originally from the fundamentalist community, but you have deconstructed from the fundamentalist community and are keeping the baggage in play. The baggage doesn't need to be there. That's propaganda that creates the baggage. Do you understand? I didn't say that all that well, but that's a really good point that I'm going to elaborate on in the future. Because that was straight out of Matt Dillahunty's mouth. The God that you are saying exists, Robert Wright once said to, um, Robert Wright, if you don't know, is a Buddhist guy. He's an agnostic. He says he doesn't believe in God. But when he starts talking, he sounds super spiritual. He sounds very similar to me. He was talking to Sam Harris. And he said, I could easily come up with a God model that you'd find almost not only plausible, but eminently plausible. And Sam Harris basically said the same thing. It doesn't have all the baggage associated. Okay? Some of the baggage came from the fundamentalist community, but most of the baggage being kept in play by the atheist community. The baggage doesn't need to be there. That's why you don't need to fight me tooth and nail if I am right in my perceptions that God exists. If I'm right in my, the, my little prayer closet and I've discovered something, go, hey, wait, God is really good. You go, no, he isn't. Problem of evil. Blah, blah, blah. You don't. The baggage is coming from you. The baggage is coming from your propaganda machine. It isn't innate in the God concept. Yeah, fundamentalists might have started the problem. <laughs> well, I guess they started making it angry, like, I don't know, God would play with Pokemon and get sentenced to hell forever. <laughs> Not only harsh, it's like insanely harsh. Pokemon means pocket monster. If you're playing with Pokemon, you're going to burn it out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's not only a harsh God. It's like off the charts ludicrous. Why would anybody believe in that God? I don't know. That's why he deconverted. But the God that most people believe in readily, easily, without any struggle is kind of a generic lovey-dovey like, you know, there's a star man waiting in the sky. He'd like to come and meet us, but he thinks he'd blow our minds. There's a star man waiting in the sky. That one. That's from David Bowie. Not necessarily Christian. But there's a lot of Christian lyrics in his songs. A lot of God, hidden God ideas in his songs. I don't know if he was a Christian. I do know he had an exorcism performed on himself. I think that's an actual fact. It could be one of those urban legends. Because he thought he had a demon. I swear to God that's true. Or at least as far as I know it's true. I read it in a book. Could be wrong. Could be misinformation. Go look it up. Um, so, God. Genera God. Lovey-dovey kind of gooey, lovey thing that cares about everybody and loves us all so much. That's really easy for people to believe in God, guys. The only people who don't believe in that God are atheists. And they're doing that to some degree on purpose. Why? Because they think it's too close to, I don't know, whatever angry psycho God they were raised to believe in. That's a huge part of what's going on. I mean, I'm going to go into to real arguments about the physics and idealism versus materialism. These are solid arguments, guys. These are, these are not like, you know, weak-ass apologetics. And even the weak-ass apologetics, I'm going to reconfigure them. Train, train some of these people up to make them strong. You'll see. The resistance might still be there, though. Why? Because the resistance is coming from you. It's coming from something deep inside of you that doesn't want me to be right. Why? Because you're still associating with some sort of weirdo version of God that you were raised up to believe in. I wasn't raised Christian. 
So I had no baggage along those lines. When Matt Dillahunty said that, that that God that you're talking about doesn't come with all the baggage, okay. Doesn't have to. That's the point. It doesn't have to. The baggage might have started in the really hardcore fundamentalist community, but is being continued by the atheist community. And sometimes they present that as the only option on the table. Now that's ironic, but true. If I'm right, you want me to prove it to you. You don't want me to not prove it to you. It's just like Bigfoot, JB. Just yield. Let go and let Bigfoot, <laughs> let go and let Bigfoot, JB. Bigfoot is coming, JB. You cannot stop the Sasquatch, JB. You <laughs> stop trying. All right. I fell apart at the end there, but I was doing well. <laughs> I thought it was funny. If you guys didn't think that was funny, you know, I can't help you. 30 minutes, so I don't want to go on for that much longer. Bloviated a little. Yeah, I got off topic a little, but not all that much. And I will be going over this stuff time and time again in the days to come. The Lactheus thing is essentially a scam. It might not be a scam. You might genuinely be a Lactheus. But if you, two tweets later you compare God, believe, to Santa Claus, you aren't actually a Lactheus. You resolutely believe that God does not exist. Well, you owe it to us and you owe it to yourself to come up with some pretty, some pretty hardcore explanations why. Because I find that claim extraordinary. And it doesn't correspond to most of recorded history. Throughout, if you, if you entailed in the concept of plausibility is how easy it is for people to believe. And if you include history, not just our present moment, gods and godlike entities and supernatural beings and supernatural entities are really, 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 really easy for people to believe in. Really easy. You got to do some work to not believe in them. And to even, even promise you, most of you, I, I have yet to talk to someone that hasn't had some sort of vaguely supernatural or vaguely mysterious or some sort of hard to explain encounter. I have yet to meet someone that, can't, that doesn't have something that's really hard to wrap their brain around. Ever. So you're doing some work. You are doing some emotional, psychological work. Why? My guess is the baggage that Matt Delahunty referenced. The baggage you associate with the term God. Does indeed, that's why I'm going to start switching terms to transcendent other. Transcendent other, I can pretty much guarantee within the next couple of years, I can prove as provable fact. Why? It's not going to be all that hard to do. The arguments are pretty darn close. And when you factor in the, where, the frontiers of physics, I think it'll be pretty much a slam dunk game over. But I'll let you decide that for yourself. As of right now, uh, that's all I can say. <laughs> Bigfoot is coming, JB. Get ready for Bigfoot. Bigfoot, Bigfoot. You better run, you better hide. Bigfoot is coming to tear your hide. <laughs> all right, I'll stop before, I, before this gets just too, too weird, too outlandish. All right, that is all for now, kids. Mass has ended. God peace. Amen.